Okay. If a patient has two insurances, primary is Blue Cross Blue Shield and secondary is Aetna, then you bill Blue Cross Blue Shield, get, invert, get reimbursed, then you are able to bill Aetna for the remaining amount you billed Blue Cross Blue Shield and it was not, and if that was not covered, or in this case, not for us dietitians. I was just wondering because I've seen my own personal bills and see how certain providers bill the primary and then the secondary. So, um, so in terms of that question, if the primary doesn't pay in full, then you can build a secondary. But generally speaking, if the primary pays, then you can't bill the secondary for more money, okay? A lot of times what happens with the secondary, they're not gonna pay if the primary doesn't pay, okay? So if your patient has a primary insurance, you can also submit it, um, you can also submit um, in terms of, um, you know, like on the same claim, like you can put the patient's primary and then you can also put their secondary on the same claim. So you don't have to resubmit. So there's gonna be a spot for the primary, then also put the secondary. So what will happen in that particular situation is that it's gonna kick it to the primary first and then it's automatically gonna kick it to the secondary if there's any anything remaining, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? What, what can I clarify on that? Does that, does that make sense? Um, yeah, that, that answers my question. Thank you, Amy. Of course, of course. Um, and then your, your second question is a good one. So um, your second question is about how do you send out like, um, and I, and I feel badly. Oh, I yeah, this is like a little bit more, mark, uh, I guess on the marketing side. And I was browsing my Kajabi yesterday. I haven't really had a chance to like go through all of it. I feel like I'm still kind of like, let me polish up on the, uh, the group reimbursement yeah. finish ad then transfer to this one right i did see you had a section i don't know if that's what it was but i've been wanting to get like a group of emails and just kind of get like emails every so often the way you send to us i love that yeah so and and i and i feel badly because i know you've asked that question like three times and i feel like <laughs> we've, not, we've never answered we've never answered it's okay it's yes. okay <laughs> yes. um so i do all of my emails in Kajama. Oh my god I, I'm getting my hair colored and I like, I look like a homeless person right now. It's so funny when you see yourself on zoom, like, I don't know. I feel like it's like you like, I don't know. I look, always look homeless. So don't worry today. I'm getting this all done. The skunk done right here. But, um, I use Kajabi for all of my, so I love Kajabi. So as you guys know, I host the membership. I, I host all of, um, all of the programs. I do all of the master classes. Previous to using Kajabi, I used MailChimp to do my emails. Um, but what I found with MailChimp, it was a little bit cumbersome. So Kajabi is, is relatively expensive. So the more, the more products you use, the more expensive it gets. So if you have maybe three products, maybe, I think it's one, 150 a month. I have the one that allows me to sell up to 15 now and it's 199 a month. So it's expensive, um, you know, relative. But for me, all I need to do is sell one program, you know, I, one of anything to, um, you know, to kind of um, do the cost of that. But let me just show you kind of what I mean. Sometimes it's easier. Adrian, you use, you use for your courses and stuff too. You use um, Kajabi as well, correct? Uh, we use Kajabi for our courses, but email marketing, we use uh, ConvertKit. ConvertKit. Okay, cool. Yeah. But so I know that you sell, cause I, I know that you sell some really cool products too um, over there. So this is the back end of Kajabi. So, you know, these are all the products per se, things that I, you know, that I sell. Um, you guys know the cheat sheet. So I utilize it for the, you know, the products, but what I love about it is the marketing feature. So you can create forms, you know, um, you can schedule sequences. So, you know, when anybody buys a product, 
it's good to have a nurture sequence. So if you bought Adrian's um, HIPAA course um, and her reimbursement piece with that, you guys know that automatically will opt you in to a series of emails. And the intention of that is, you know, you bought one product um, and then you nurture that relationship with the intention of, you know, selling a different product down the road, right? There's a, you have to have a specific intent with that. So um, if you've done my group coaching program, you guys know there's 42 emails, right? I had to write all 42 emails. So what's nice about Kajabi is there's a sequence. So, you know, on day four, you know, you get the email about, um, you know, how to log into Facebook. Um, but remember, I don't have, I mean, there's a lot of Kajabi VAs. I do all of this. So, um, you know, what's nice if you guys are doing a program or you're selling any type of program, if you came to high ticket packages and programs on Thursday and you know, what I was finding with my group coaching programs is that sometimes people get lost in the shuffle. Um, and that's why I like having an email sequence just to say, Hey guys, like, you know, remember the program that you paid all this money for. Um, I, it makes me so sad when somebody buys a high ticket package and they don't utilize the services. And, um, so for me, these emails reinforce the major topics. So, um, like I said, so day 45, the same thing, if I do check this out. So if I do a event, right. So this Thursday I'm doing, um, building out your team. And so, um, if you're a dietitian who's ever interested in adding some new dietitians to your team, you want to come to this one. It's free for you guys. Just use VIP RD. It's a hundred bucks for everybody else. So, but you guys can see, I create, it creates all the emails before, right? So, and you can copy these. So if I use this for this masterclass, um, you know, I'll use it for all of my masterclasses, right? You know, so it's always good to get the reminders right before everything. Um, so I've read all the books on sales funnels and launching and which is hilarious is that when you use a program like kajabi it's already done for you um you know obviously you tweak it and you use your own language but like um you know i try to you know i, I have every time i create a product i have a checklist of all the things that need to get done so i have to create a landing page um you know and so I do all of these things, um, you know, like there's nobody, anything that you guys get aside from the scheduled reminders that come from my intern, every, and I need a new computer. It's, I'm going to get one tomorrow. So it's like the video card you guys can see here is shot, but, um, but so, yeah, so I do all of that in Kajabi and I love it. Um, it's nice for, tra um, you can you, yeah, you guys can see my screen. Like what's nice too, is that you can tease out sales. Um, so you can see like what products you're selling. Um, you know, so I can see, you know, so it's just nice to keep track. It's also kind of fun to see. And I, I know this one is fun for me. So I created this cheat sheet for you guys. I had no intention of really monetizing it. I was like, let me summarize everything for you guys. It had no intention to have a monetary value, but check this out, 163 cheat sheet. Like, so it's an extra $3,200 that just from a sheet, right? Once again, it, could I sell it for 50 bucks? I think that I could, but you know, my intention was that I created it for you guys. It was free for you guys. And I said, you know what? This is really good. Let me open it up to everybody else. So. Um, you know, I always say if you have something that's really good, you know, there's going to be products that you guys sell or services that you guys sell in your business that are top tier, right? So like, but I often say to myself is that, okay, so I have high ticket coaching, but not everything in my life has to be aimed at making money. Once again, this was not this was, I created it free for you. I said, it's a really good cheat sheet. I think people will really like it, but you know, so 
I just want you guys to see once again, it's just nice to see like, you know, different streams of revenue, right? So starter pack, right? Check that out. I sell it for 99 bucks, you know, to date it's made $5,300. Once again, that was not my intention. I created the starter pack for dietitians in my groups and my one-on-ones because I wanted you guys to have something to get started. But, um, you know, and also like, the, I actually want you guys to also think too um, about some of these master classes, right? So I do master classes on reimbursement, but check the, I, what I want you guys to really see is, which one did I just do? Where was the big one? The one that I did last week, check that one, okay? For two hours of my time, $1,900, okay? I sold it for 50 bucks, not a big deal, right? So I want you guys to start thinking about potentially integrating something like master classes. Once again, remember your, my, my intention on my master classes was to only sell 10. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, like I, I wasn't, you know, like I said, I just had to compensate my time a little over my time. Okay. But you know, I, you know, so I, I like the concept of a masterclass. Um, and Brandy, I know we were talking about this on our call on Thursday, but something for you guys to think about once again, it's not a super high ticket item. It's a very high value item. Okay. I always say for can I 10 times that value for my for who's ever receiving that product? So I say for people that came to that class, I want to see how I can deliver at least $500 worth of value, right? So you get tons of resources and kind of a how-to. So if you guys have a niche population, I hate that word, <laughs> ideal, um, ideal client. Um, if you have somebody that you're serving you know, um, you know, can you guys create a series just like mine, right? Mine's based on insurance. Um, you know, Lorena, you do awesome work with cultural competency, competency. Can we do something, you know, after you launch that program where it's a masterclass, so a series, something a little bit, I don't want to say lower ticket, but you guys have like such a big skill set and there's so many things that you guys can do in a class. Right. So like it doesn't have to be fancy, you know, like that. But I I think a lot of dietitians leave a lot of money on the table in those areas of expertise. Right. So you guys all have something that you guys shine in that your patients would pay money for. And it doesn't have to be a huge amount. Right. Like it could be twenty five dollars a class. You get 10 people in that class. That's two hundred and fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. You, you do it on a topic that you could do in your sleep, right? You know, I say that very lightly because, because obviously I did that class on Thursday. I've done it three other times, but I thought on Monday it would be awesome to revamp it. So I spent hours, you know, switching it up because I didn't like the last time. So I say I got paid $2,000 for like two hours of my time, but I'm lying because I'm super anal and I probably killed myself right up until I presented. So, um, yeah, like Denise, so like a self-study course for oncology. Okay. So, you know, yeah. And you can get CUs like, so you guys know, I got my course approved for 40 credits. Like, you know, that's a lot. So C, so CDR gives you for every one hour of time, they give you one credit. So when you're submitting a self-study, um, that's certainly something I can help you guys all with, but it's like a hundred hoops, right? To get those 40 credits, it was like I needed to have three reviewers. I had to have, mm -hmm. I had to hire a professional, you know, Lorena, a professional question writer. Um, I got a quote for a professional test writer, somebody who could to write the questions for the assessment, $7,000. I found somebody who did it for 75 bucks. She was so good. I paid her 150. Like when she sent me the invoice, I just, I paid, I paid it. I get, she was like, no, it's only for 75. I'm like, no, 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 no. Like you saved me like 
you know, uh, $1,800, I mean, uh, like, you know, $6,800 by what you did. So, um, but yeah, get them approved for credits, um, you know, create like something like I have, you know what I mean? These, um, but I'm going to let Lorena jump in because Lorena, I want you to number one, tell everybody about the product that you're working on and launching, but I want to, I want you to tell them about how you design that from the heart and where it came from and why I think it's going to be so good. Like I told you in that email. I just want to also say something because it has, um, I want to say two things. I want to talk about the course, but I also wanted to say something else. Um, one way that, um, that I want you to start thinking about creating a product. It's something that I did. Um, and that is blogging and creating a product and launching the product. And I realized that when I started working virtually, I had to create handouts and create them virtually. Um, and my field is diabetes education. So there was a lot that I had to create that was that had to be engaging with the patient. So I said, well, you know, I have all these handouts that that are very interactive and I work with uh, many Hispanics from different parts. So I said, you know what, maybe other dietitians uh, need these products. So I put them all together. And I used SEO and I wrote a blog about it and I started selling the products to other dietitians and diabetes educators. And all of a sudden I started selling this package about using this diabetes education uh, products. And I sold over a thousand dollars, $20. So it was not that I was selling them for $50, just $20. Yes. And over a few months, uh, it was like a thousand dollars. And little by little, it was like on page three on Google. Then it was on page on Google. So this is something that every day I'm selling more and more. So if you start thinking of well, which handouts am I using? Uh, I just saw about an oncology RD things and and you don't have to uh, sell it for CEUs if you don't want to. It's certainly mm -hmm. that's another way. But whatever handouts or products that you have created to teach and uh, patients about anything, whether it's oncology, intuitive eating, GI disorders, prediabetes, whatever it is, this is something that you can sell to other dietitians that are that are using these products to teach. And now you can create this, this package. So this is another way. And if you know anything about SEO, this is another great way to do it. And tell so, them, Lorena, like, tell them like the most important. So what is the most important part when you're selling a product, especially to other dietitians? Like what, like what is so important? Like what, what did I say in my crazy email to you that I, you know, like what, did, what do they need to feel? Like what's the most important thing that you lead with when you're selling a product? Well, what, when you're selling a product is, is as follows. Uh, people don't want to, I know that when we sell, um, we usually sell, well, you're going to receive five handouts and you're going to receive a handout that teaches about carbohydrate. And then the second hand that will teach you <laughs> about protein. And then the third hand that will teach you about this. And that's usually not how we purchase. Um, we purchase the benefit that we're going to receive. Correct. So when we go out to buy, let's think about a mattress. When we go out to buy a mattress, we don't buy a mattress. We buy a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. That's what we are purchasing. So we want to feel refreshed the next day. We want to feel that we are walking on the air the next day, mm -hmm. that we are feeling energetic the next day, that we can take the entire day. That's what we are buying. Yes, then the next day we're buying that we're, we're getting a 
the best quality product, the best price, then those things come later. But we want to know that we are getting the best night's sleep. That's what we're selling. Correct. So um, when we hear, um, usually when I am going to sell a product for, for someone that has diabetes, I usually go to uh, a Facebook page um, that that persons with diabetes write about. And I hear what they're talking about. I hear that um, when they go to a restaurant and they're frustrated because their friends are ordering foods and at now they, they feel frustrated because they can't order the foods that they like. And um, they just don't know, they, they can't enjoy anymore um, being with their friends. So I want to sell them the enjoyment that they had before, mm -hmm. before they had diabetes, that, um, that, that level of, of joy that they had before is that enjoyment that I'm selling them. Uh, not that they are going to learn how to count carbohydrates. Correct. That doesn't matter. It's the, it's the joy that they are going to feel. Um, that being in control of their lives. That's what you're teaching them. You're teaching them that they're going to have a good night's sleep. They're not going to wake up five times because they have to pee. Um, that's what you're selling them. Yeah. So... So that's and, and, what and you have to, to. And to summarize, you when you guys are creating your products or your services, no matter what you're selling, it has to solve, you know, it has to solve a main problem or what we call a pain point, right? So what mm -hmm. Lorena is saying is that the pain point isn't what you get, you know, you know, what you get or what you purchase, it's the solution to the problem, right? So as when we, when we position our products and our services, um, you know, I had reviewed Lorena's product that she's going to tell you guys about. And before I even looked at it, I said, is it okay if I make some comments and some suggestions? Because usually when I look at people's products, they are not solution oriented. And so I have to teach people that correlation. And so I was expecting when I looked at Lorena's landing page that it was going to be all about what you get. You get handouts, you get, you know, da 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 da. But instead, it was it was exactly what I was hoping for, which was positioning the problem of registered dietitians with cultural competency within the Latino culture. So like like I said, I knew exactly by by reading the first paragraph of the landing page the problem that it was solving. So like, so if you're gonna sell oncology handouts, you have to specifically say, what are the problems that oncology dietitians face, you know, or, or what, what is the information they need to know? What do they feel most overwhelmed by? And you need to position the product directly as a solution to oncology dietitians. And you have to use emotionally charged words because people buy with emotion and they justify later on, right? And the most important thing when you put your product in front of somebody is you want them to say, hell yes, I need that, right? So I always say, think about something that you bought. I'll use a, I'll use a shameless example. I just bought a Chanel bag and I always wanted a pink Chanel bag, but I never found the one I wanted. I know this is ridiculous and shallow, but this is just me. And so I saw it and I had to have it, right? Is it worth the money that I paid for it? No, but I need it. And for me, that was always something that I, like, I, I don't know if it's, I made it or whatever it is. We all have those things that, you know, and it, it is not always material, please. Like, you know I mean? I know that this is just me, but you see it, you know, you need to have it. Like that is me that I want it. And so you have to make sure that that emotion, I know that's like a very bad, shallow example, but you want to make sure that people like feel that. Right. So when they see your product or your service, like, like I, I that's me, right? Like I, I need that. 
So, um, so Lorena, tell us about your product that you're selling um, and like how it can help dietitians. Yes. Um, so I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> when I first, yes, when I first came to, to this country um, many, many eons ago, um, I was watching TV in Spanish and I'm talking about, I have been here for about a few weeks and it was in Spanish and there was a commercial and in the commercial, it was for orange juice. And I'm going to say the brand, it was Tropicana orange juice. And, um, but the word in Spanish for, for orange was China. And it says jugo, which is orange, jugo de China, tropical, which is tropical. And I'm thinking, China. And, and I said, did I hear this correctly? And, um, and it says China, but I saw the orange and I saw that it was yellow and it was pouring. And, and this 17 year old Colombian head thought, you know, oh, maybe Tropicana, which I've never heard before. Um, what they're doing is they're importing the oranges from China. Uh, and that, that's what I thought was happening. So obviously it wasn't a Spanish issue because I understood Spanish. That was my first language. I spoke English because I went to an American school in Colombia. I'm Colombian. But obviously it was a cultural issue. Obviously, Tropicana must have used a Puerto Rican or Dominican um, company, and they use China instead of naranja, which is the way that we use and most of Latin America speaking Spanish use, and they use uh, China uh, instead of naranja. So that's when I learned that that was the confusion. And because I had only been here for a few weeks, I had not met other Spanish speaking uh, groups. Therefore, I had no idea. So I created that story in my head. So what happens is that uh, many Americans, depending on what Hispanic subgroup they meet, they learn this is, it's almost like looking at the elephant. Depending on what side of the elephant they're touching, that becomes the elephant. So whether you're grabbing the tail or the trunk or the, le or the leg, that becomes the leg. So the six largest Hispanic subgroups in the United States are from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. So every time that we hear Latinos or Hispanics in the United States, we think of whatever groups we have encountered. So what happens is that the big umbrella of Latinos becomes a mixture and it becomes just a little bit of this and that, but it's, it has never been very comprehensive. So it's almost like saying the European diet or the European culture. So imagine if we said the European culture and then everyone is represented under this big umbrella of European culture. And there's a little bit of spaghetti and there's a little bit of paella and a little bit of sausage. And then there is a little bit of escargot and everyone is represented there. So there is really no justice for everyone because everyone is lumped under a European health beliefs and practices. So then I said, boy, you know, we really need to help all the uh, healthcare professionals and provide them with a GPS so that they can feel more confident and they can know what is it that they need to do when that patient walks into the door.
so that they can provide the best care that they know how. Now, it will be impossible to know every little nuance of every person from every area in Latin America. It will be impossible for me because every country has different regions, but having the, knowing the right questions to ask, understanding and having that level of awareness then will make you confident enough to be able to elevate your practice. And that this is what this program is all about, is the first and only program that is six weeks in duration to really um, give you this in-depth uh, knowledge and awareness of the six largest subgroups. And then that give you the confidence of each of this, it will give you uh, of 90% of all the Hispanics in the United States from six different experts. Plus, it's going to be the culinary component. So it's not just going to give you the knowledge, but it's also going to give you the component. And it's going to be tons of fun because I just want to make sure that this is not just the blah, 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 but the do, do, do. So, um, so I just hope that you join us and um, I'm just going to just put the, uh, the code and um, uh, in the chat so that you want to take, so if you want to take a look at it and, um, and join us. So that's yeah, and I'm going to post um, the link to the landing page as well. So, so, you know, so what I love about it and I, <laughs> once again, um, you know, it, for me, even though I lived in Costa, believe it or not, I, I lived in Costa Rica for a year and I used to have really long dreadlocks. Um, and so life was very different then, but you know, what, what drew me to this product is I always say is even though, you know, even though I speak Spanish and I believe it or not, I'm fairly fluent in Spanish. You know, I only know what I know as a white SUV driving New Englander, right? You know, I'm about as white as it comes. And so, you know, historically in my head, I've always lumped Latinos, you know, kind of, you know, ignorantly kind of all together. And so what I like about this is that for me, I raise my hand and I say, I need that. You know what I mean? And I say, I do work with a large Hispanic Latino, com you know, that those are, you know, so, so for me, I look at a product and I say, wow, like, and I do raise my hand and I say, wow, I could really benefit from that product. So, um, you know, so like I said, it's a good example. And once again, it's worth um, credits as well. It's accredited through CDR, but I just want you guys to look at that. I'm going to share it. I have put it in my notes to share it, but it's just a good example of solving a problem. And it solves my problem as, you know, as somebody who like, who doesn't, who's, who's not, you know, in one of those subcultures, I've lived there, but I, I don't know very much. I only know what I know. And I probably know like popular media and popular culture more so than actually knowing what this population actually eats. And so the cool part is, you know, they're all dietitians that are going to teach, you know, the culinary aspect of it. But it's the sort of thing that I feel like we could all benefit from unless we are in, you know, even people that like, if you are Dominican, you probably only know what you know. Mm -hmm. And so what I love about it, like I said, is that it was a product that when I read the landing page from a marketing perspective, my hand went up and I was like, that's me. So, um, yeah, so I will definitely, um, share that link. Um, so you guys can, you know, check it out as well. And like I said, it, it's what's most important, you know, it also what's most important about any product that you sell is that you feel it is freaking awesome. Okay. And you have to stand, um, you know, you have to stand behind your product. It, it has to feel good to you. Dan, I'm going to pick on you. I'm not going to make you unmute yourself, but um, Dan and I were on a call this morning and we were talking about like trying to find a product that was consistent like with what Dan was passionate about and what he was good at. And we came up with a lot of lists of like stuff that like he doesn't enjoy, like his practice is aimed at weight management, but what he's really learned is like, he'll do that, but those are not what he really enjoys. He really enjoys working with patients with IBS and he really loves like meal prep and setting people up to succeed. Um, you know, and so like, sometimes you'll learn what you're good at 
sometimes what you think you were good at or what you wanted to do, I always say like, I, I don't know what I want to do when I get older. I'm clearly older. Um, you know, but I know what I don't want to do. So sometimes brainstorming in your head, you know, what am I good at? You know, what's the, you know, what's the perfect synergy between what am I good at and what do I enjoy? Right. Like I said, I, I started in eating disorders in division one athletes. Like that was a very finite carved out place to start. And I quickly realized, even though I was killing it and I had a monopoly on the market, I didn't love that. So my only plead, and then I will shut up and I will talk about reimbursement is whatever product or service you design, like make sure you feel it in like your heart that it's awesome, right? Like when I sell my reimbursement coaching programs, when I sell my consulting, like, I feel like this shit is awesome. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, I am confident in the products that I sell. I am confident in the price point that I set them at. And like, you have to feel that, like you have to feel something when you create a product or a service. And sometimes it comes from a place from what you didn't have. So if you had an eating disorder or you have IBS or you work with diabetics or you have diabetes, or maybe you don't, I'm probably the only one on the call that has diabetes, but um, you know, but you say to yourself, like, what, like, what did I really want? Or what did I really need? Right. It's not okay, these are my list of deliverables. Like I always say to myself, like, how can I solve a problem? Okay, like what are the main problems of my target people and how can I serve them in a way that's clear and kind, right? That like solves their problem. But like, you know, I, I say this all the time and I, I know I'm sure it's getting old, but like never sell anybody a bag of shit. Like we're not, you, you lead with value. Like you lead as if, you create these products for like in your head, almost like they're going to be for free. I know they're not, you guys know, I like to make money more than anybody else, but um, you know, but you have to lead with a value proposition. You can't lead with, I'm going to sell these high ticket packages and programs and services and, you know, and I'm going to make all of this money. You know, you say to yourself, how can I help my ideal client first? What would be helpful for them? And like, what would deliver a remarkable experience, right? Like, it's not about just selling products or services. It's about doing it in a way that makes you remarkable. And like, if you tell me you are not remarkable, I'm going to come to your state and beat you over the head because all of you guys are so freaking awesome at what you do. You know what I mean? So remarkable means just being you and like, you know, and being you, right? Like unapologetically. Right. You know, it's like that's who you are and that's who people want. And some people you may be a little too spicy for, but those are not your people. So never feel like you're not enough. Never feel like you have to fit into anybody's box because clearly, you know, like, you know, I don't, you know, and I almost got thrown out of my internship for not fitting into it. But I almost got thrown out of my internship at Yale in June um, June before an August graduation, because, you know, cause I was spicy back then, you know, so, but like, I, I wasn't willing not to be who I was or behave in a way that was consistent. So just promise me that as you guys are designing your services, um, you know, that they are who you are and they just elevate you, right. They're going to make your money, which is great. And I can always help you guys refine that piece. Um, you know, I can, I can, I can look at the things that you guys want to monetize and I could probably tell you right away if they're going to make money. You know what I mean? If you lead with the deliverables, like Lorena said, like what you actually get, you get 12 training modules. That's not what people want to hear. People want to hear the benefits and the value, right? Like, you know, like a pack of cigarettes, like what does it cost? Like 12 bucks? Like, is it really worth 12 bucks? Well, to some people there's value in it. I was laughing on my birthday. My dad sent, sent me into the convenience store to buy a pack, um, a carton of cigarettes. And at 43 years old, I had never purchased a package or a carton. So I said to my dad, I said, wow, I said, like, you know, I said, it's like, it's just amazing what people, what people, you know, it was like 150 bucks, you know, what certain people see value in. So, you know, so just don't, don't sell anybody a bag of shit. Cause I will also find you, 
um, you know, and beat you over the head. But I know you guys won't do that. But just lead with value first. Um, okay, that was a tangent, but I'm going to come back to this last question because I think that there are a lot of questions on Medicare. So for Medicare patients, I have not seen a Medicare patient yet, but I have one on the waiting list. So her card says Medicare. On the back of it, it says Blue Cross Blue Shield. And I'm assuming this is a supplement. Do we bill Medicare or do we bill both? Okay. So that is anything but a supplement. Okay. So the way that Medicare works is Medicare will only by itself cover 85% of the services if the patient just has straight Medicare for most products. In 2014, MNT started to get covered at 100% no cost share to the patient. But say that Medicare patient went and had a long hospital stay. If they just have Medicare by itself, Medicare is only going to cover 80% of those costs. So that's why most patients have something in addition to Medicare. Okay. So when you guys see a Medicare card that has Medicare, plus a, um, a commercial logo on it, that's what's considered a Medicare Advantage plan. That are, that's what's referred to as a managed Medicare plan. So that's kind of like an all-in-one. That's a Medicare plan managed by, in, in this particular case, Blue Cross Blue Shield. The most common ones are Medicare United, so Medicare managed by United, and then down south, you guys see Medicare Humana products a little bit more. Medicare Aetna, okay? What that means is that the Aetna piece, you guys, it doesn't mean anything for MNT, but the Aetna piece picks up the 15%, okay? A supplement would be like an AARP supplement, okay? A supplement, always remember a supplement just like that. It's like a modifier. A modifier modifies the claim, a supplement supplements the insurance plan, but it has no coverage on it. So if the patient went for dental, it might supplement and pick up the deductible, but a supplement never has services on it and it never covers MNT. So you're generally never gonna bill anybody that has a supplement. So if somebody has a supplement, it kind of means nothing in the world of medical nutrition therapy, okay? But if they have, a Medicare Blue Cross Blue Shield, two things have to happen. Number one, all Advantage plans follow Medicare rules. Same exact rules. Don't let people tell you that they have obesity covered. That's only if you're billing incident to a physician and that's not really worth your time to do because it's, it's, it's a low payout even if we set that up. So diabetes and renal, three years post-transplant for a kidney. Okay, those are the only things that are covered on any Medicare plan. I don't care if it's a Medicare United. I don't care if it's a Medicare Blue Cross Blue Shield. So that's the first piece, same benefits as any Medicare plan. Okay, second piece, although I defy this, so I, I even hate saying this, but technically you're supposed, you are supposed to be in with both plans. You have to be in with Medicare first, and then you also have to be in with the commercial carrier, which in this case is Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay. Um, back in the day, I, I had a lot of Medicare United, but it took me until 2020 to probably get in with United, but I still got paid. I'm not really sure how, but I did it for at least a decade. So, but I don't want you to do the, you know, so be in network with both. The claim goes to Blue Cross Blue Shield. It does not go to Medicare. Okay but also the same rules, MD referral only, okay? So, um, so Medicare Advantage plans, although they are more robust to the patient, they have, you know, they cover other things for medical nutrition therapy, same exact benefits, that claim just goes to the commercial carrier and you have to be in with the commercial carrier or it will post out of network. That is why, especially if you work in weight management, or even if you don't want to work with Medicare, you have to be in network with Medicare, even if you're going to submit to a secondary. So if the patient had two policies, 
which would generally only be the case if they were still working. So say they're 66, they qualify for Medicare, but their spouse is still working for the state. They have two separate policies. Generally, the commercial plan is going to be the primary, okay? And you have to be in with the primary, you know, in that particular case. So a lot of times back in the day when we were all brick and mortar, like I would have my patients give me the two insurance cards and I would have them put a P next to the one that was their primary if they had two. 95% of the time, they don't even know. They put an S next to the primary. So I'm not mad at them, but you just have to be mindful that Medicare people are lovely and they are some of my favorite people, but they are not always good historians and that is okay. So sometimes we might have to, you know, kind of redo what we did, but we always wanna make sure that we handle them with the, you know, with kid-like gloves. They're lovely, lovely human beings and they require a lot of us, um, but we will be, some of us sooner than later, exactly in the same position that they are. So that's gonna go to the commercial payer and the same benefits, just diabetes and just renal. Okay, does everybody, anybody have any questions on Advantage plans, anything with Medicare? Because I feel like I've been seeing, not in our group, but in a lot of the other groups too, you know, like people are trying, the, the biggest mistake that I see people making with Medicare is when a patient has a secondary. The dietitian is like, awesome, I'm in network with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Oh, you know, like fuck Medicare, I'm not dealing with those types of patients. Those people are not my people. And then those same dietitians are like, yeah, I'm going to build a secondary. And I'm like, you're not. You know what I mean? You have to be in network with Medicare to get the rejection. The reason being, you're going to pull six different things off the Medicare rejection to submit to the secondary. So um, like I said, we're, we're, we're seeing a lot more advantage plans than we are standalone plans. Um, so that's all good, you know, in terms of that. But um, that's why that's why I'm a firm believer that, you know, even if even if Medicare are not the people you want to serve, it's in your benefit. If you're working in, say, IBS or IBD or, you know, anything else, you cannot submit to the secondary until you submit to the primary. OK, does everybody understand that piece? OK. And then I wanted to answer Adrian's piece, because some of you guys may, you know, may have questions on this or you guys may be developing group coaching programs. So as we know, we can bill insurance for group group coaching programs. OK, so, you know, you guys, I always say. You guys decide on whether or not you want to you want to bill insurance for groups, which is 97804. That's a one unit, 30 minute code. Usually you'll max out at two allowable visits. Two, so if you bill for an hour, that's two units. The payout is fairly low. That is usually it's 15 to 22 per 30 minute unit. So maybe you get, I'm going to just go on the low side, $30 for that group visit. Okay. If the patient has like um, a limitation on their visits, that 97804 if you bill with it, it's going to use, it's going to use one of those allowable visits. So, you know, so if you're, if you're in a state where your Blue Cross Blue Shield product gives you unlimited visits, you want to be rocking out with group, you know, with group programs, because it's a no brainer, right? You have your patients meet with you for an initial, maybe you meet with your patients every two weeks, and then they have a follow up. And then on the off week, you know, you parlay them into a group. Groups can also be virtual now. OK, um, you know, to the best of my knowledge, if you're in a state where, you know, where the telehealth laws are still going strong, you guys can be billing for groups. So it's it's a nice way, especially if you have a population who is like minded. So I work with women who have PCOS. We run PCOS groups. We run diabetes groups. Once again, we never run them in isolation. Right. I'm going to make no money, you know, if I'm just running groups. But once again, it goes back to that piece. You lead with value, right? You say, what, is, what do these people need? Okay, women with PCOS, sometimes, feel, not even women, right? Because I work with people who have PCOS. We don't call them women anymore, but people who have PCOS. 
Um, you know, they need to feel heard, they need to feel supported, they need to feel not alone. If you're working with newly diagnosed diabetics, right? Like, you know, it's like all of a sudden those people think they can never eat carbohydrates again. So like, if you have a specific population that you know you find yourself repeating things over and over again, then parlay them into a group, um, you know, and then have a cash dollar for that group. So like if your patient doesn't have unlimited visits, you know, like maybe you charge $20 and only try to run groups where you know you can get at least eight to 10 people in each one of those groups, right? Because at 30 bucks a hit, you know, you have to make it worth your time. So, you know, you should be making like 250 to $300 per hour off of those groups. If you have two people show up for a group in all, or I say three, I just like rock those. I like put them in a group, but then I would probably build those out as like a 97803. You know what I mean? I do, you know what I mean? Cause you probably probably have, you know, anything above four. I mean, the academy defines a group as anything more than two. I define three or more. <laughs> those are any Plano's rules um, in terms of that. But what Adrian's question was about, so Adrian does a ton of really amazing work in the eating disorder world. Um, she has a ton of amazing dietitians who work for her. Um, and she does a lot of intuitive eating and things like that. So, um, you know, her question was what happens if they don't show up for the group? Can we still bill for the group if they don't do, you know, if they don't show up and they're present, but they do the homework that's presented in the group. And unfortunately, the answer to that is no, because the definition of 97804 is MNT in a face-to-face -face environment. 97803, MNT individual in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, you know, like, you know, what you could, you know, with that client is you could have like a standalone charge, you know, or, you know, like I'm a big fan of not selling anything a la carte and having people commit. So, you know, saying to people if they, you know, it's tricky because, with a group, you want to make it like the engagement piece, the community piece. You don't really want to penalize people because it may be at a time that's not convenient to them. So maybe having like, you know, a, you know, like a cash based price or they're buying, you know, a certain amount. So then, cause you still have to review their homework, you know what I mean? And so when you're reviewing their homework and you're not able to bill insurance or you're not getting paid, then that's extra work for you. You, you mentioned I mean? also that if there was a small group, you would bill 97803. Yeah. Um, I thought you had to like make sure, even though it was in a group, like it, at least spend an individual 15 minutes with each person in order okay. to bill. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would just, you know, because it, say it's like an example like this. It's like we're in a, I, I think you can like, you can utilize and, and push the gray area, right? Like, so we're in a group and we're doing some group stock. But at the same time, we're also doing some individual stuff. And if there was probably just three of us on the call, we would really be just doing like, you know, I'd be looking at your problems and I'd be looking at Christine's problems. So I think, you know, as long as you can, I always say like when, as long as you feel like if you could document what you provided to that patient, you know, in a 97803, then I would feel, you know which you can, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, as long as you could talk about if you had to produce for an audit, which you wouldn't have to, I always say, just do it. Like I said, most dietitians can document very well, you know, as long as they know what needs to go into documentation, they're, they're fine with it, you know? So don't worry about, I much rather you get your worth for the visit and what you're supposed to get and then think about the semantics like after of what needs to be documented and charted, um, you know, for that patient, because documentation is only really, you know, it's like document, you, you only have to be able to recreate the note. Like, so if the insurance company audits you, which we get audited all the time, they don't care if it's like your second or third attempt at actually creating it. They just care what's on it when you submit it. So like if you had a group template that you guys use and, you know, everybody who's present, you know, you know, you have comments about kind of who said what, what was provided, what support, what interventions, then yeah, I would completely feel fine, you know, billing. If you had a group of like 12 people 
and you did individual, could you technically do 97802 for all of them? Uh, oh, three. Yeah. I mean, probably, right. If you almost did like, I mean, and I guess that would almost be like hot seat coaching, right? Like that's kind yeah. of, I think that's like, so if you put each person on the spot and yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I think you could technically, yeah, I, I think that a lot of these codes, once again, as long as you feel comfortable supporting it, you know what I mean? Um, a hundred percent, you know what I mean? The same thing with group versus people are like, well, do I have to bill insurance? No, you could just really say that you're doing more education than you are MNT because really what's the difference there? Um, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just kind of semantics and the nu nutrition care process, which like, you know, it's like, what is that really to begin with? I mean, I, I understand like assessment evaluation, but like, you know, it's like, I mean, really, um, you know, we all automatically do that to begin with. So um, I think that you then, you know, but if you're going to do that and you're going to pull it out as a cash program and you're going to charge, or you're going to do meal support and you're like, you know what, like, my time is much more worth $30 per person on this, you know, just make sure that you have them on like a commitment, right? Like it's, it, it's not like going to orange theory where you, it's like a $30 drop in, you know what I mean? It's not like your, your practice is not like soul cycle, right? Because it's like, you're going to have people that like, you know, it's like that, you know, it's like you want people to commit, you know, cause it's hard for you to do your job if they don't commit. It's like single selling, like a single session. It's like people are going to squeeze the living life of you for that single session. Like people ask me that all the time. Somebody sent me like, oh, I'll pay you $500 a session. I'm like, number one, like you're not going to negotiate with me how I, you know, I, I sell like, you know what I mean? There's a reason why we do everything. There's a reason why groups are important. Like the, the shit isn't arbitrary. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what am I going to do with you in 60 minutes, you know, on a coaching call when like you really have. 600 hours of questions, you know what I mean? So then you're going to email me 1 million questions for the next 60 days that I never got paid for. So, yeah. So I think, I think groups can be really good. Um, you know, as long as I always see the house always has to win, you have to win no matter what with your programs. That's why you always have to say like, you know, like I always see, you always have to think in your head, worst case scenario, even in that group setting. Like what's the worst case scenario with a super needy patient in that that's going to require more effort because the way you're going to price that program isn't on the easy peasy clients that show up and do the homework. It's going to be like the one that you have to really push and pull. So it's the law of averages. So I don't want to say that like the rotten apple spoils the bunch, but like, you know, it's like how much energy and time from you is it going to take? on the, your most needy patient versus the ones that are doing what they're doing. And then you take the high and the low of your effort and your time and your value. And then that's the price of that. So, and it's also like, as we all know, the, the more we practice this, the, um, like the more we change our prices, right? Like I tell people, like my initial visit in 2007, 50 bucks, you know what I mean? And then maybe 25 on a follow-up. If you had a 20 spot, I take a 20. You know what I mean? So like, you know, it's just like, you know, yes, there was negotiation. Whatever you had in your wallet, I would take, you know what I mean? I probably take a pack of Starbucks, Star, Starburst, you know, probably before I would take like a $15, you know what I mean? So everything has, you know, value within this. So, okay. I'm going to shut up now. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Um, and I will see you guys soon. Okay. Bye. <laughs>